Today is May the 24th, 2019. I've got something so nice and simple today. I think everybody should have one. Uh, I've been thinking about this for quite a long time. And uh, I had some extra meter movements here. This is a um, 30 micro amp meter movement that goes in the Bird Model 43. This is also a 30 micro amp meter movement. It goes in a different kind of watt meter. And um, what I always wanted was something very simple. There's no active parts in this. You don't have to plug it in and there's no vacuum tubes or, or batteries or anything in it. It just runs straight off of the, the power derived from across the dummy load. But I had a real problem in getting it to track properly. Well, I found the solution to that. Uh, first of all, let me tell you why I'm using 30 micro amp movements. It's because they're so available. Uh, I uh, studied a schematic for the Heathkit AW1, the Audio Watt Meter 1, and they used a 200 micro amp movement. But I don't happen to have one of those, and I don't want to start buying them. Besides, I wanted one with a with a watt meter scale on it, and it says that says something like watts. So the 30 micro amp is a real easy one to come by. They're all over eBay. Uh, if you buy a genuine made in USA bird meter, you're going to pay some money for that. Maybe 150 bucks. I don't know. They're pretty pricey. But you can get a lot of the um, the Chinese made ones uh, in round, square, LED lit up in the back, etc. Anyway, that's why I used a 30 micro amp because I have it and because uh, making a video of it makes it very easy for it to be duplicated. Okay, but the secret that I didn't know about until recently <clears throat> is it takes two attenuator networks to make it track properly. If you use a single uh, attenuator network, you can set it anywhere you want accurately for, for one power. But when you go to a different power level, it's kaput. It just doesn't work. So you got to have these two. This is out of the Heathkit AW1. You can look it up. AW-1. Uh, this is the newer version. This right here happens to be exactly 10K if you add all these resistors up, and this is 100K. Um, and what I did is I used some big 10-turn pots, some precision pots, so that I could dial it right in. And I found out that these values right here are what I needed. 7,224 ohms, 2,878 ohms, 54,800. And this one is about 5,845, but I made this a cow pot by putting it a 2.4... Uh, K in series with a 5K so that you know about halfway in the middle of this I'll get this right here this is this is the last one that you want to make a little bit of a cow pot uh, this is just a schematic mostly it does simulate it's an LT spice uh, schematic I've got one in 914s in here actually I've got uh, one in 34As in here in in the device and then here's the meter it's a 90 it takes 90 millivolts at uh, 30 microamps, which is 3,000 ohms. So that's it. Th th this simulation doesn't give me exactly how it behaves because of these diodes right here, but I don't know how to get the 1 in 34s in there, and I'm, I'm just not really interested right now. But anyway, I want to show you how this thing works. Uh, get right to the point, and uh, you you'll see. It's so very simple. There, there, like I say, there's nothing in here except some resistors. I have the little cow pot here on the back, which you don't really need to... I guess you could actually have it internal, but I had a bunch of these, so yeah. Uh, right there's 20 watts, as you can see. Let's get the parallaxes as uh, low as we can. Well, I guess that's probably as close as I can get. And uh, there it is, right there. 20 watts, okay. I'll run this one up to uh, 30 watts. Well, let's see. Let me see if I can get 30 watts. There's 30 and a half. 29. Kind of splitting hairs here, but. There's just a hair over 30, and uh, there it is. Okay, let's run it up to, uh, let's run it all the way up to 50 so we don't make the video too long. It's hard to get it right smack on it. That's close to just a hair over 50, and uh, there it is, 50. And we want to run it all the way down to the low end. There's two watts. Let's run it up to something we can read. Just it, it tracks beautifully. I, I'm totally impressed. There's four watts. There's 
and there's four logs. Or you can do it the other way around. Watch this. I'll run this. Well, I don't know if I can see it through the through the camera here. This makes it. I'll have to run this thing into 10 watts. That looks about like 10 to me. And it says, wow, 10. I didn't fake that. That's that's really that's really true. So this this thing is uh, really good. 50 watts. Well, you know, if you've got a big 200 watt amplifier, you may need to uh, scale it for something else. But these are the values that I found that work. This is the first attenuation network right here, which in the Heath kit is this one right here. This is the second attenuation network, which in mine is over here. Now they run this into a. Uh, a 12 AU7 because they are see you could measure down to five milliwatts with theirs but I don't need amplification I'm not trying to measure five milliwatts I just want to measure like you know five watts and up and for the uh, small amplifiers that I build not this one this one will do a little bit more than 50 but it's a, basically a good 50 watt amplifier it's a dandy 40 watt amplifier I know that Dynaco rates it at uh, 60 but at 60 watts it's maxed out Anyway, there it is. That's how you, that's how you um, make your, your watt meter scales track is by using uh, two attenuators in it. What you end up doing is you, you run it up to 40 watts, for example. This is what I did. And, um, and set it, you know, by, by making, uh, uh, that's when I was tinkering with all of these values in here. I'd set it at 40 watts, and then I'd run it down to 10. And when I run it down to 10, I would see if it was to the left side or to the right side of 10. And then I would start raising one and lowering the other, raising one and lowering the other, and seeing which way it went. And if it went the right direction, I, I kept that up until uh, you, you just you just uh, maneuver it right into shape. And the next thing you know, it's tracking. It, it's beautiful. And like I say, 30 microamp meter movements. Uh, I think they're the ones to go with. They're, they're just beautiful. Uh, it's certainly not going to load your uh, your amplifier. You know, I've just got it connected across uh, the uh, breakout box, which is coming from these resistors. These are the load resistors up here. The load resistors are not in the box. They're external. In the heat kit, the load resistors are in the box, but they're 24 watt, and that gives you, uh, you can run it up to 50 watts for a very short time. But anyway, I thought you might find this valuable and, uh, and really handy. So I hope it helps. Thanks for watching.